Today we're making some summer sunflower creations. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back! The first project is a sunflower hanging sign. I'm going to start off with a little bit of ribbon from Dollar Tree. I've got some ribbon that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby. Both of these. I love this blue. I wanted some denim colored. Two little slats of wood and a placemat with sunflowers. All right, I'm going to use my staple gun as well and my glue gun and some other goodies. So I'm going to add some Gorilla Glue down here. On here, I have kind of centered it in the middle. So this is going to be the top. And I'm going to place it down in that glue. And then I'll go back over it with my glue gun and staple three. One in the middle, one on each end. I'm going to turn it around and do the other side. Now, be sure that you are using staples that are the appropriate length for the project that you are using. You do not want to staple into your table. So none of those heavy duty woodworking staples. Those really long ones, you don't want those. These are kind of short. I had a misfire there. And that's all you need to hold these together. So now we have the structure. What a beautiful print. And I love the blue on here. We're gonna make a hanger for it. And I'm just gonna tie a couple of knots, one on top of the other, until I have it thick enough that it won't slip out of a staple. I'll do the same thing on the other side and then we can flip it over. Now you don't have to leave your hanger this long if you don't want to. I just like the look of a long hanger on this type of a hanging side. But you do what's right for you here. Now I'm gonna staple so that the knot does not slip out. And then just to keep it from sliding around, I'm gonna use some hot glue right between the knot and the staple to keep it all in place. You can trim off your excess. Let that glue dry before you lay it on your table or you will glue it on the table. And I have done that before, but it's been a while. Okay, now we're going to make a bow. I have my own little bow maker tool down here, which was inspired by, you know, the one that is, um, that you can buy at the store. Not my idea. I just went ahead and copied it because I didn't have the money at the time in the beginning of my channel to go out and buy myself. Uh, you know tools. I was saving every dollar I could and I still do the same thing on this channel We always do budget-friendly DIYs and I want to make it affordable and Doable for anybody who watches my channel. So if you don't have one you can check out the link and make one for yourself Now we're just going to make a bow here. You can see what I'm doing. I'm starting off on the bottom with six inch loops on either side and the tails are about 10 inches long I like to leave the tails a little bit long until I decide how I want the bow to look. Now I didn't have very much left of this beautiful ribbon, so I am just going to do what I can with what I have. This next layer of bows is going to be uh, five inches, so we're going to make it a little bit smaller. This does have a very light wire in it, very light, but it's enough to give it some structure, so I'm happy with that. Be sure you check at Dollar Tree when you're looking at the crafters uh, square and make sure that if you're needing a wired ribbon that you're actually getting that wired ribbon because some ribbons and actually a lot of the ribbons they have now do not have wire in them. So just be sure that you're getting what you need before you um, purchase it. But Dollar Tree, you can take things back in and return it and uh, swap it out for something else. So if you need to, you can do that. Now the sunflower ribbon is going to be in four inch pieces. It may be a little bit closer to three inches. It's a little shorter here. Y'all know I don't go by any type of a format when I am doing my crafts. I go by my gut and I just, I just do it. You know, you mess up, you just do it again. You don't like your bow, it's not tied together yet. Take it apart, start over, not a big deal. We don't want to be too harsh on ourselves, is what I'm getting at. You don't want to be too hard on yourself. Okay, so we're going to slide it off with a pipe cleaner and just twist it around the middle. Nice and tight so that they don't come loose when we are fluffing because you know we fluff. A lot of fluffing. And I fluff all the way through. You can wait to the last minute to fluff your bow if you want, but this gives me an idea if you know of how much space it's going to take and where I need to put the butt based on how big it is. 
or how much space it's going to take. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to dovetail the ends of the blue one and then the uh, the other blue one and then the sunflower I will just cut sort of at a slant. This is real easy. If, if you want to do, if you don't like the little split tails here like this, the little dovetails, you don't have to do this. You can always do just a slant. I just recommend that you don't leave them straight across the bottom because a lot of ribbons will fray that way. So, you know, you just make it look pretty, make it look like you did it with intention and purpose and it's going to be fine. Okay, so I decided I wanted some more of the sunflower pattern. So I'm just going to make a little bow and I'm just going to stack it on top. This is the same type of bow that we were making on the bow maker, but I'm just doing it by hand rather than dragging that back out. I'm just going to make a little one and I'm going to set it here in the middle until I can decide if that's the kind of look that I'm going for. And it is. I'm just going to take those pipe cleaners from the back, wrap them around the front, and then pull them back to the back. And that's going to lock that one in place. And the good thing about using this pipe cleaner is if you need to adjust your bows, the loops a little bit or the tails a little bit, you can still do that. They're not glued together, so you can kind of slip around a little bit if you need to. I'm going to use my wire cutters and cut these. These pipe cleaners are twisted, so I also had to use my scissors to cut the fabric on them. Then I'm going to find placement for my bow. Now, I don't think I told y'all, this. I thrifted this placemat, but you know, you can use any placemat you can find at any store, and they're so cheap. Dollar General's placemats are a dollar, so you might consider looking at other places. You can look at garage sales, you can look at the thrift store to find a really pretty print you like and just use it for something else. You know, we don't typically use placemats in my house, but I've found that the artwork on some of them are just, they're really, really pretty. And you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know once this is complete that this is a placemat. Would you know? I wouldn't think so. So, you know, I'm just going to adjust a little bit more, get those tails a little bit higher. I don't want anything to really block out that pretty picture that's there. Don't y'all love that blue with the yellow? That is so pretty. So I'm going to try to make more projects with sunflowers. I'm definitely going to be making more this fall. I like the look of that bow. It's a little different, but that's okay. Now because my tails are kind of floppy here, and they want to fall down onto the picture because it's a heavy bow, you know, it's a big bow, a rather big bow. I'm just going to use a little dot of glue to just kind of put those tails up out of the way. I'm going to use a little scrap of foam to go on the back of my sunflower, which I pulled off the stem. You can see here that I'm adjusting that smaller bow so that it will hopefully extend past the size of that flower. I didn't anticipate putting the flower in there to begin with, or I would have made this a little bit bigger. You know, I would have left the loops longer on the sunflower one. But I didn't anticipate that, so we're just going to work with it. I'm going to take that. and The reason I put that foam on the back of there is because it's kind of concave on the back of the flower, and it wouldn't have had a surface, a flat surface to glue down. So I made that, I brought that up to the right height so that it would touch the bow and the flower and get a good contact with the glue. So then I'm just checking it out and looking and seeing what's going on here. And that's when I see, okay, well this bow, the sunflower is really not enough. It's not long enough, but we're just gonna work with it. You can poke it out of the flower petals if you want, however you wanna do it. And again, I make adjustments, fluff out the bow. Whoops, I hit my knee on the table, y'all. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is how this little beauty is gonna look. I hope you like this one and I hope you maybe even have what you have at home and make this. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. It's free to subscribe and watch. The next project is going to be a sunflower wreath. I love wreaths. So I got a little piece of greenery. I've got some greenery I pulled off hydrangeas because they look more like sunflower greenery. And I'm going to use these summer sunflowers from Dollar Tree. I have two bunches. These are Timu burlap ribbons. 
we're going to use some more of the same ribbon we used in the other project because we want to keep this where you know you can style with these together this is a 15 inch wreath that I thrifted and it's like a vine uh, I don't I don't think it's a great vine it's really thin I'm going to push all my greenery up toward the top of the sunflower toward the sunflower head and then I'm going to cut off my stems. I like to start cutting them a little bit long and then you can trim them down if you need to. This wreath is very tightly wound so I do have to trim them. Alright so if you push the layers around on your sunflowers you'll get a more full look. When you get them from Dollar Tree sometimes they're laid right on top of one another and you can't see the separation so go ahead and just kind of twirl them around and they'll work. Give that sunflower a little twist at the top of the stem and you can kind of weave it down into there and then adjust the head. You see? You do the same thing here. We're going to bend it and then you can push it down into your wreath. I'll show y'all in a minute. It was something I didn't notice in Dollar Tree. I was counting to make sure I had enough flowers naturally, but some of the flowers, one flower on each bunch does not have that little last little ruffle of petals so they're kind of plain looking um, and I wasn't expecting that and didn't really realize it till I got it on the wreath so you know we work with what we got though now if you need to flatten out the petals of your flowers and sunflowers are, are spread way out they're not bunched up so I went ahead and used my um, my little heat tool over there and I gave them a little blast of heat and they flatten right out I'm going to grab those hydrangea leaves that I uh, stole off my hydrangeas and I am going to put those one per flower, okay, until I go around one per flower. Now I use this pattern because I only had a certain amount of leaves and I wanted to make sure that I could stretch them out over the entire wreath. Now you can see bigger gaps. I do have some bigger gaps here, but we need a place to put a bow later. So if you don't like the gaps in there, go ahead and fill them out. Now you can see me with my hands over here pointing one and two. I had enough greenery here that I could go back and every other sunflower add an extra leaf. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just adding one in every other flower. So one leaf here, two leaves here. I hope this makes sense to you. Now if you do not have, obviously, some hydrangeas just sitting around, silk hydrangeas, use whatever type of greenery that you like that you want to use. This just looked a little more realistic to me and you know I love my rustic. I'm a rustic girl, always I'm going to be a little rustic and woodlandy, so I wanted to have that in there. Plus I like that dark green against the lighter yellow. I'm going to pull pulled all these off of the pig and I'm going to use them separate because I can really stretch them out better this way and I love that little flyaway look that this has. So I'm just going to add one to each little set of leaves and flowers and I'm gonna have them sort of facing toward the outside of the wreath not the inside we got something else we're gonna do toward the inside but this is it so far and you could stop here if you wanted to but you know I'm not going to right you know me baby's breath and some spike we're gonna cut this off these are some pieces that I thrifted but you can use what you get from Dollar Tree certainly save your money wherever you can now I'm cutting that pig apart because we're going to stretch it as far as we can, right? I'm going to add one to the inside, one to the outside. See? Now this one will go on the inside. I'm just going to feed it down into the top inside. I guess is how I'm going to describe that. The top inside. Because it's going to be on the top surface of it. It's not going to be, we're not going to add anything underneath. So here we have all the baby's breath. And I did miss a section, but I'm going to go back and fix it. You can see right between where my wrists are, I missed a little piece here. I missed my pattern up, but I fix it. And I'm going to go in here with the spike. And I'm going to add these to each, uh, every other little sunflower patch. Every other one. Look at the blue. I'm just loving the blue with the yellow. So pretty and so summery. I love this look. I might have to put this one in my little screen porch area. It's so pretty. It's pretty, it's dainty, and it's affordable. I love it. So let's add a bow, but this time we're going to add something different. We're going to go to eight inch pieces. We're going to get two pieces of, this is actually like a linen ribbon with wire in it, but it looks like denim, which is, I love it. It's so pretty. 
with the yellow again. I'm a little obsessed, if you can't tell. And then I'm going to dovetail the ends. I'm going to do two pieces. That's going to be the bottom. Then I'm going to cut sunflower pieces into 8 inch strips also. This is going to be a little stack bow. And then I'm going to do the same with the brown and the yellow burlap. I'm going to cut them at a slant. And I'm just going to cut the same upwards direction on both ends of each one of these. They're smaller, so you know I'm not going to do all that extra little trying to dovetail these tiny ribbons. See? Upward, 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 upward. And then stack them along like this. You can grab a piece of jute, and you can use scrap jute. You can use the cords that you took out of your signs. You know, the little uh, hangers that you take out of your signs. Save those things. You can use them again. And then go and tie a knot in the middle. Now it's going to flip up when you tie it. That's okay. That's just because of the width of the bigger ribbons underneath there. We're going to fix it. They have wire. Just remember that. The ones on the bottom, they have a little bit of wire. So you can just pull that apart. Kind of flex it a little bit so it's got a little um, dimension to it. And then you're going to pull your little pieces of ribbon apart and around. Then I'm going to go up to where I left a little gap here. And that is now going to be the top. I'm going to take that same piece of jute that we tied it together with. And then I'm just going to tie a knot on the back. And then with the tails that are left, I'm going to tie a little piece of a hanger. And it'll be right directly under the bow, which makes the bow the top of the wreath. One little knot here, and then I'm going to trim it even. And now we have our little hanger. I really want to know what y'all think about this wreath. Do you like this wreath, and are you going to try it? This was not a hard wreath to make. It's You practically do the same thing all over the entire wreath. Anything that you don't like or don't have, substitute it for what you have or what you prefer. Yeah, this little wreath is a keeper. The next project is framed sunflowers. And we're going to use Dollar Tree frames, of course. Here is a Dollar Tree calendar page. Here's the artist. And then these are the two gorgeous little frames that I found at Dollar Tree. Here's the info. I'm going to take those apart. Now you see the back looks different, but the front finish is exactly the same. I'm not worried about that. Take the backing, the paper, the glass, take it all out. Also, you can go ahead and take out those little holders if you would like. I'm going to just use the flowers off of this page. So I'm going to go around and just roughly cut out some flowers that I like. Then I'll grab my small scissors and do some fussy cutting. This is the detailed cutting where you really get in there and make sure that you cut off as much of the background as you can and make that little piece of art the center of your attention. Once you get done, you can go back in there and fix it. Y'all, there is a tree frog outside my window somewhere, and he is chirping it up this morning. He is really loving his life. So if you hear that, yeah, that's, that's not a barking dog. That is a frog. So I'm just going to use some tools here to pull this out, some little pliers. And don't worry if a little piece chips off. Mine did too, but you're not going to see the back, so it doesn't matter. And it doesn't damage the structure. This is some gorgeous burlap that I found at the thrift store. Y'all, a brand new roll with the tag on it at the thrift store. I'm going to cut two pieces out, and this is going to be what our backing is going to look like. I think that the black and white is going to be really pretty with the sunflowers. And if you are into, you know, more of a farmhouse look, this may be the one that you really like. We're going to have a lot of options with these too, how you can use them. So I'm just going to fold it over the backing or the, uh, yeah, that's the backing of it. It's got the little uh, kick sand on it. And we're going to Pull that across, a little hot glue, and then I'm just making sure there's no wrinkles. I'm not pulling it too tight because it's just cardboard and it will bend, but I'm pulling it enough that there are no wrinkles and that pattern can stay the same. I don't want to distort my plaid. So I'm going to just do the same process. If your little ends poke out when you fold the two side sections over, just get your scissors and trim it up. You're not going to see that. It's okay. 
Let's not be hard on ourselves with crafting. It's supposed to bring us joy, right? Okay. And we're going to do the same thing with the other one. I'm going to start with across from each other. That's how I do it. And then I do my sides. So what's across from each other's first, and then we do the other sides. Protect your fingers because this glue will come through the burlap. Okay. Now once that's complete, you can start trying to find placement for your little sunflowers on here. Any way that you like it is going to be fine. If you don't have sunflowers or like sunflowers, go ahead and grab any calendar page you have and cut out what you do like. I'm going to use some of this clear school glue. I have never used this on a project, but I found it at the thrift store and thought, hey, let's give it a shot. Let's see how it works. So um, it's very runny, so just be careful with that. I'm just rubbing it all over the back, kind of spreading it out. I'm not putting like a ton of glue on there, but I'm spreading it out. All these little edges, so nothing flies up and out of the way. And then I'm gonna gently tap it down. Now, it's going to kind of want to lift up because it doesn't grab immediately like hot glue would or like a thicker glue would. So then I decided, okay, let's do this. Let's try using a really soft brush and that seems to work a little bit better, but either way is okay. I think you'll have less wrinkling and worries if you just, you know, kind of brush it on. I didn't have any problems with wrinkles though for this. I guess because maybe because I put it on fabric instead of paper. That's probably why. Okay. Don't worry about it not being all the way to the edge because the frame is going to cover that up. Now I'm going to take that same brush and I'm going to go all over the top with that same glue. All over the top, all around, and then all over the burlap to lock it in place. Okay, y'all, think about this. Now I'm just drying it, showing you how we dry them. Think about this, school is almost out, so if you got kids or grandkids that have school supplies that come back home, grab those glue sticks. Yes, indeed, don't let that stuff go to waste, even school glue, mm-mm, don't let it go to waste. Okay, so here we go. I'm using some antiquing wax on a wet baby wipe, and I'm gonna go all over this. I love the rustic look, you know, all the chippiness and the farmhouse look of this, but I do not wanna cover it up with paint because I wanna see that grain underneath. So I'm just using the wax. Let that dry before you put anything else together. Then I'm gonna put the backing on. And rather, since we took out the little um, tabs that hold it in place, I'm just gonna use glue to seal it back in place. I've done this before on other projects and it works great. You can go all the way around or you can just do the sides. Give it a chance to dry, flip it over, and here are your pictures. You can arrange those on the wall. You can put them side by side. You can put a hanger in between them. You can use them on a wreath, whatever you like whatever brings you joy. So here are those projects. Now I'm gonna call these three projects because the frames are kind of like a duo. Here's the beautiful sign. My hanger has it looking like it's a little sad, like it's bending downwards. It's really not. It's just that wreath hanger that I'm using to hold it up. So don't be confused. Here are the little framed pieces in the beautiful wreath. We hope that you have got some sunshine in your day. If you enjoyed this video and enjoy budget-friendly DIYs that are a little outside of the box, feel free to subscribe to this channel. It is totally free. It's free to watch. It's free to subscribe. Like the video if you did like it, because when you do that, that gives me an idea of the type of things I want to make in the future for you, because this channel is all about you. I want to give you what you need to get creative and crafty, but I want you to do it on a budget, right? We don't have to spend a fortune to have these beautiful creations in our home. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.